Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasika. Last night witnessed a situation where Netherlands, the Orange, a team that missed participating in 2018 FIFA World Cup, beat Germany for the second time in UEFA Nations League 3-2, then last night 4-2 in the one of the European qualifiers that were played in various venues of the continent. Of course, this is the Fans on Fan favorite segment where we're discussing international football. That forms the basis and also the transfers that happened on the deadline of last week and so is racism which has been a rampant practice affecting several players including Romelu Lukaku and Paul, Bog Paul Pogba both at Inter Milan and United respectively and Samuel Leto announcing his resign retirement from football. How about Somalia pulling a surprise against Zimbabwe? Of course let's get straight to the nitty gritties of the same. So Robert mm -hmm. I've just seen you reporting live from more international sports center Kasarana ahead of tomorrow's clash. Mm -hmm. What's the update? Besides what you told us, what's the atmosphere like, the mood in the playing camp of the Arambe Stars? I think it's one team that is really compact this time round and uh, you don't get to hear a lot of stories coming out of that dressing room. I think Coach Kim has molded a young squad that they understand what he wants and what he is offering to that team. It's a team that is really quiet. You, you don't hear anything, any stories come out, coming out of that dressing room and that is what you want from that team and the major update is there's a crop of really good young players joining the team someone like Cliff Nyakea you saw him there and I saw him in practice this morning they have that competitive age even in practice because they want to break into the national team so players like Boniface Mushiri coming in we've got Ade from uh, Bandari also joining the squad so those young players like Wandera also from Tasca is a big improvement for the team and also we saw Jesse Were in the team he was training but he has a ham he has a hamstring so we don't expect him to be playing tomorrow but that is what we want from the national team and also the foreign best players that have joined the team. Michael Longa was training in the morning, good for the team. Ayub Timbe was also in the team and it was a perfect mold and they are going to play tomorrow. Nyabura, I'm really good to see you. The last time you were here was two months ago during African Cup of Nations 2019 edition. I'm happy for you that you've been uh, lifted from the cold room and you are back at the helm. I know you, <laughs> you're rallying... F uh, for Kenya ahead of tomorrow's game, what are your expectations? Ah, yes, of course. My expectation is that we win that game. As I was saying, is that um, bringing in new players is very good, but I'm yet to see. Uh, I, I can't really say my favorite, though I'll say my favorite players like people like Dukabuya, people like uh, Harrison Mwenda. I really want to see them in. You must be a fan of Karibanki <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not, but I'm a fan of good talent. I've seen what they can do. So I'd really want to see them maybe in future be included in the in the team. But I'm but happy for the new players, for the for the um young players being blended with the with the foreign players, the, the usual players we see. So I'm really positive about I, I think uh, game. Well, one thing I learned from the training today and everything this time around is that this time around the stars is not all about talent. Yeah. It's all about hard work and how much hard work are you putting in mm -hmm. to get onto that team. You realize that there are players like Ivonne Waizuza who mm -hmm. have made the team this time around. And it is that hard work that they are doing at the club level and also in practice that will get them yeah. onto that side. Harrison Mwendo has been around for, I think, four years now. If he can work hard because mm -hmm. it's Coach Kim who, who brought him onto the limelight, mm -hmm. he can get that chance to join the team. Yeah, but you wouldn't really know anyone's mm -hmm. potential in the international team if yeah. you don't include them. Yeah. yeah. But maybe you are attributing <laughs> Sharks players to their inclusion uh, in the national team after their victory against Everton not being really. the first Kenyan not club really. to win against no. the English <laughs> Premier League side. No, there is no. a lot of Kenyans saying that, you know, Karibanki Sharks now <laughs> has to contribute immensely no, to the national team because they played very well at <laughs> fully packed Kasarani Stadium beating Everton. Is that your reason as no, well? No, 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 definitely not. But maybe that's one of them because it shows that, that we that are, was we an are really... Match. But <laughs> that was... Uh, that was something else. I'm yeah. just talking about the overall they play of the... They good players. Uh, yeah, they have good players. Yeah. It's not about the Everton match. Yeah. No, it's just but, that... But they still got a chance. Yeah. They still got a chance because we have got a long way to go to 2021 because it's all about the qualifiers of 2021. Mm. And we have got other friendlies coming in. We're just playing Uganda. 
we are we'll be playing i think libya in morocco then we'll be playing mozambique back here at home then we head on to the qualifiers so there's a lot of time for the coach to gather these troops but also don't forget the team they are going against if there's a big derby in east africa it will be tomorrow forget tanzania it is the uganda cranes and if kenya is going to play uganda cranes i can tell you for free it is going to be a big game yeah. because uganda they come all guns blazing <laughs> I saw Aucho is already in town. Kateriga was not selected this time round. And for both teams, the big change has been the coaches. We've got Francis Kimanzi leaving, coming in after Sebastian Mini. And then we saw De Sabri leaving. And now we've got uh, Alan Mobiru taking over the Uganda Cranes job. So for both sides, it's a friendly yes. But the most important thing for the national teams is the test matches that they have as they prepare for their way forward. Of course, it's FIFA international break and no European uh, club football this particular weekend. Several friendlies and several qualifiers as uh, far as uh, Euro 2020 is concerned. AFCON 2021 in Cameroon and World Cup 2020. Of course, the two will be coming later on, but much action as far as African and European football is concerned. Let's get straight to what happened last night. Uh, the Orange. Do you think their failure to participate in 2018 World Cup was a good opportunity for them to go to the drawing board? And now they look <laughs> a great side under uh, Ronald Koeman. Yes, yes. I think that was a very, very good wake-up call because they knew they had to do something about their team. And uh, seeing players like uh, Memphis Depay playing really well and also yeah, people like uh, Wijnaldum, they really played, played very well. And um, I think this is a preparation even for them to participate in the next coming World Cup. So we hope to see them. And I think it was a very good game yesterday. Coming back from two goals down was a very, very massive win for them. And I think Germany, people are even saying, is it Germany that was not good? Or is it just Netherlands that was too good for them? I think it can be said like that, considering that when we watched the UEFA Nations Cup last season around the one that Portugal won, we saw a side of Germany that is taking time to transition to a new crop yeah. of players. Mm -hmm. And the Netherlands, after the World Cup 2018 miss, they went back and made sure that they are making a team that can do something. This team made it to the finals mm -hmm. of the UEFA Nations Cup and lost it to Portugal. And now they are starting again. So for them, they are a team that is together. They are a team that is molded. Germany at the moment, they are still relying yeah. on Tony Cross in that midfield. <laughs> and he's got a lot of young players on his side. Yes. Yeah, so even mistakes from Ty, a non goal from him. And that was not a German that we are used to seeing. So it will take a bit of time for German to come together. But the thing that they can take from it that their identity as a team has not been lost. Yeah, it has not True. been lost at all. But for Netherlands, they were just the better side. Yeah, yeah. I think Germany is also mm. missing people like uh, Ozil to drive the midfield there. So I think they have not gotten replacement for someone like him. So they have, they are having problems transitioning to... Dinabri played well. Yeah. Uh, of course, in absence of Thomas Muller, who's been at the helm. Mm. So is Makore, who's... Do you think even Joachim Lo has overstayed uh, at the... Uh, the German national team, he's been at the helm for quite yeah, long. True. And something, mm. one of the outstanding observations uh, that, you know, captured my attention is, you know, the inclusion of Ryan Babel yeah. in that particular <laughs> Netherlands team. Mm. The two, Babel mm. and Joachim Lowe, has been at the helm. For uh, Ravel, it worked for Netherlands, mm. but for Joachim Lowe, do you think it is overstayed? Um, I think it's about him maybe changing ta tactics, maybe he's... Yes, maybe he's overstayed, but it doesn't mean that he can't perform if you overstayed. You re maybe he really needs to look at other tactics. Maybe if it's not working for him right now, it really means he has to do something different. Maybe including other players or blending them, the old and the new coming ones. But I think change is always good. So if they can change him, maybe it will be good for them. Well, again, as Azerbaijan, I know Gareth Bale is the captain for the national team, and uh, you remember his tribulations at Real Madrid uh, with a rift with coaches in Adin Zidane, but he scored the last club football. Uh, Los Blancos played two old draw against Eibar, if I'm not wrong, and he was on the score sheet, then getting red carded during the last moment of that particular game. He was crucial for Wales last night, and Ryan Giggs is the man in charge.
do you think it's high time now we can start seeing a national team like Wales playing at the big stage even at the World Cup because they have been missing out and players like uh, Gareth Babel who have been stand out at club level, you know, missing out on a, such elite competitions? I think Wales have been there, they have been performing very well, let's say in the Euro and the UEFA Nations Cup this time round. But for Gareth Bell is all about he doesn't sparkle all the time. Not a player who is in the big stage for all the time. He has been at Real Madrid, I think, six years now that he has been at Real Madrid. Won three Champions League titles. But what was his impact in the three Champions League titles that he won? Everybody can say it will be given to Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema. Yes, he's called some crucial goals, but not a really direct impact on Real Madrid as they were as a team. For Wales, he is one of the senior most players in that dressing room, and that is why Ryan Giggs has to give him the captaincy and try to mold the players in his way, and that is what he's going to do. But can he deliver up to the end of the season? Because now, the moment the UEFA Nations Cup starts, it's going all the way up to May. Can he deliver on all that time plus club football? It usually goes back to his injury problems because he's a player who has never stayed a full season perfectly until the end. I think the only last time we saw him af being perfect a full season when, was when he was at Tottenham and they beat, I think, Inter Milan getting on to I think, the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League. Past that, we have not seen him at the big stage proving day in, day out. If he can do it for Real Madrid this time round, then good for him. But for the Wales national team, it's all about the seniority that he has in the team and also Ryan Giggs trusting him as a captain to mold the younger generation going forward. Let's speak about transfer deadline. Earlier this week, on Monday, it was transfer deadline for especially players participating in English Premier League, joining other leagues because for England it got closed a few weeks ago. And we saw player movement, Henrik Mkhitaryan moving to Roma. And someone was tweeting, I don't know whether it was a joke <laughs> or a realistic post, that how comes Roma is you know getting actively involved in acquisition of players mm -hmm. who are perceived to be EPL flops because Mkhitaryan mm -hmm. and so is Alexis Sanchez both joining Italian football, Roma and Inter Milan respectively. We saw Fernando Lorente joining Napoli from yeah. Spurs and Mauro Icardi alongside Kayla Navas joining Paris and Germain. Icardi mm -hmm. has been, you know, a stubborn boy at Inter Milan. Quite mm -hmm. talent but bad influence in the dressing yeah. room. And Chicharito formerly at United, recently at West Ham, joining Sevilla mm. in Spanish league football, which captured your attention in terms of player movement? <laughs> I think it's the it's the Sanchez one, and um, you saying uh, people saying about Italy or Italy team speaking <laughs> uh, Premier League flops. I think they have seen. Um, potential in these players that these EPL uh, teams have not because even up to now Alexis Sanchez has always been my favorite player and he has not performed at uh, Manchester United I don't know if it's because he's not given the chance because most of the times he he has been on the bench so there is no way he would have made any impact on Manchester United and I have a feeling that he'll really perform in Inter Milan than the way he, he performed in Manchester United because he's got a lot of potential. This is a player who loves football. Even I remember when he was at Arsenal, some of the times when he was uh, called out maybe for sub, he was really complaining because he wanted to play. So it, I don't know what really happened. Maybe you can tell us because you're a Manchester United fan. You can tell us what really happened to him. But um, I think that is the really that is the one that caught my attention. I think if there is a, a job Nyambura Muridi would have played passionately, being my <laughs> spokesman, because she always gets it wrong. And disclaimer purposes, I support Nottingham Forest. Mm one time UEFA Champions League win and just a secret admirer of Man United. Osoro Robert is the one who supports no, 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 no. Man uh, United. We know and you he looks like he's also disowning his team after an awful show of results. But mm. what captured your moment? Because I've seen even people slamming teams like United for failing to get, you know, good players who are living for free, who are living for loan, yet they could have been good addition to Old Trafford squad. I think it's the coach who makes the final decision on the players they want on their team.
team. So they can, can be a player outside there even if he's free, on free transfer. But what is he going to add to a coach's team? Because he's the coach who sets up his team knowing that this player, if he comes onto my side, is going to do something good. Chris Smalling moving to Roma yes. was a big one for me because now he has a chance to play season in, season out mm. and try to get a chance back onto the England squad. But the Italian clubs, I think, they don't have the much intensity that the English Premier League has. That's why most is of it the because players... of viewership? No, because no, 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 that is not. debatable. A player does not care about viewership. He already has a contract with the club. He's mm. getting his millions at the end of each week. So. Why does he care about the same reason TV as to why viewership. Victor Wanyama was moving to Club Rouge from Spurs? It da Victor Mugobi doesn't care about TV money. TV money is Premier, Premier League is one that will care about the, about uh, how much viewership we are getting and all that. But at the end of the day, these players just want to move to a place where they can play football yes. day in, day out. Look at uh, Alex Sanchez. He is still moved on to Inter Milan. Man United will still be paying a huge chunk of his salary. But at the end of the day, Alexis Sanchez just wants playtime. Yes. TV does not give playtime. It's the coach and the <laughs> player who goes out there and says, I'm going to play very well to get a chance to be on this team. And then, when these players are moving now, if you are moving from England to Italy, your money goes down. The, the cup of money you are earning, the salary has to go down. Because so even in the case of Alexis Sanchez, they could not afford to pay him. So, because he's on loan, Man United will be paying his, most of his salary, but for him, he's getting that playtime. And also, we had Icardi moving to Paris Saint-Germain. Mm. I think also, Coach Tuchel is looking at a lot of depth on his side. He's looking for a lot of experience, depth on his side, on players who can help him perform, not on the League One stage, but I think most importantly, on the Champions League stage. Racism has been a rampant practice in European football of late. Uh, Romelu Lukaku, when he was taking his penalty, was racially abused, and so is Paul Pogba, and so is Abraham, Abraham Tami mm -hmm. at Chelsea. Both players, you know, getting racially abused, especially when they miss out converting either penalty or an open scoring opportunity or scoring mm -hmm. against an opponent. Do you think docking of points is the way to go now? I really don't know what will stop racism because even even locking out the fans, it's not, it has not been um, it has not been successful because there's still people going out there and um, and racially abusing uh, the black players. But I think I think that is the way to go because they'll feel the pinch about their club being denied the points, or even the players should even abandon the match. Because it's 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 yeah. really bad Here when you do catch. that someone you do <laughs> do that to someone. Okay, here is a catch. Roma versus Udinese or Roma versus Inter Milan. Inter Milan wins, mm -hmm. but they racially abuse the Roma players, <laughs> right? So the fans will be like, "You can dock yeah. us the points," but what about the players who played yeah. that game and won? Yeah. What will you True. be telling them? No, that is the. That is the part because um, the opponent, the, the, the winner might have abused people and they will be, they denied the points. And you can't really say it's everyone who is involved in that racial, uh, racial abuses. So it becomes really hard to contain it because at this point, maybe they stop. And then from nowhere, the next game, the next game they start again. So I think it's, it's, about being, it's about the fans being educated to stop it. Because even if we try and, um, and contain it, maybe even denying the winning team the points or even the people who have scored, and the people continue doing that, the fans, Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. I think it starts with the fans themselves. People have to be educated that they have to appreciate others the way they are. So docking of points, uh, you think, is the way to go? Because even if you ban a fan yeah. who is closely associated with throwing a mm -hmm. racial uh, abuse, others will follow suit and do the same. And like if you dock points, they will feel the pinch. Yes, yeah, but but uh, as Osori is saying, mm -hmm. look at the scenario he just provided right yeah. now. It's going to it's going to be debatable, even the, the docking of points. Because what if the other, the, the team that uh, has been uh, like has 
participated in the racially abusing people uh, they denied the points and maybe they were not even involved in it so, so it becomes it's, it's, hard it's unfair it's unfair Samuel later announced this retirement from football uh, and now probably will be concentrating on something else let's say coaching we've seen him getting involved in matters african football amada madcalf president giving the opportunity to several you know former footballers Didier drogba samuel leto you know or some middle what do you remember samuel leto for i know he's been magnificent he's been tremendous he was exceptional he's such one of the african greats uh, when it comes to football at well, club level and national team level but what's the exceptional moment that makes you remember Samuel Leto for? Yeah, he's one player who has made really great moments for everybody in the world of football first with the Cameroon national team and I think he's the all-time Africa Cup of Nations top scorer I think he's mm -hmm. got 25 goals and that's a milestone that no one other striker has got into that level and we have re to recommend him for that. I think my best moment for Samuel Leto was when he was at Barcelona alongside Messi and Daniel. They really played some good football and also winning the Champions League second time. I think third time with Jose Mourinho in Inter Milan. He was really a good, good striker. But the good thing I liked about Samuel Leto in all the problems that African teams usually have and the money that Samuel Eto has as a player usually came to the aid of the national team. That is one exceptional moment that a player can come to the rescue of the national team that even the government cannot do. And that was actually telling the government right on that you're not doing your job and you don't know how to do your job. And that was, for me, some of, one of the biggest things that he has ever done in the world of football. But that, he's a player that we will miss on the field of play. Nyamura, yourself? Uh, I think I'll say it's about his commitment to the, to the national team, of which you don't see with the current players that we have. And... Um, He'll be remembered because he's the all-time top scorer in the African Cup of Nations. And the fact that he has played, I think, in dif uh, in professionally in different six countries, that is a very, very big achievement for him. And um, I think I'll also remember him the way he played really well in Barcelona. I think that is where his talent was really shown. And just about him being committed to the national team is the very best thing about him. I think one of a few Africans to have conquered at the big stage in terms yes. of international football, yeah. playing at Barcelona mm. and his partnership with Ronaldinho Gaucho. You remember Messi mm. was in the scene, but uh, <laughs> you know, no player has overshadowed Lionel Messi at Barcelona. Several of them have left the Camp Nou because of that Argentine yes. ace, Thierry Henry, mm. you know, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, several of them. I think even Samuel Eto mm. left because of that, but he had conquered. Yeah, true. But, when we were growing, we used to watch African Cup of Nations and, mm. you know, Intermittable Lions up against the Super Eagles of mm. Cameroon and Samuel Eto, Jeremy Njita, Patrick Boma up against the likes of Sunday, Olise, Nwan mm. Kokanu, JJ Okocha. What a past, Osoro Robert. Actually, I did that game. <laughs> I did that game during the just concluded African Cup of Nations on TV, mm -hmm. on Channel One. And I was with Simon Mulama, former international, and I was asking him, does this mean that, you know, the derby between Nigeria and Cameroon lost value when the likes of Samuel Leto mm -hmm. exited the scene? No, it did not. <laughs> it's because... But it doesn't live up to the billing. Yeah. It, 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 yes, it is true. It is the change of times. It is the change of times. We cannot deny that. I think we look at in the 90s when uh, Super Eagles was playing football and Cameroon made it, I think, to the World Cup in 1990. That was won, I think, by Germany. Yeah, German, they won it in Italy in 1990. We have had standout performances of players. I think the 1990 Cameroon is called the Bom Boma, the Patrick and Boma Cameroon, but he, in that squad we had uh, the likes of Roger Miller uh, in that team, so you cannot say he was the only one performing in that side. Then, as Cameroon was going down, we saw the rise of the Super Eagles in 1990. I think 
Super Eagles came uh, came up in 1993, 1994. Then we saw the likes of Daniel Amuka, Chase, Sande Ulisse, Uche Ukechuku coming up to win the 1996 Olympics gold medal. And that is the first African team to do that. But you're forgetting, in that time also, I think in 1998, Cameroon also came and won the Olympics back then before the World Cup in 1998. So it is a change of time from then to now. The big question is, the players who are playing today, can they live to the standards of the players of the past? Can the likes of Onyereu of Nigeria at the moment... Being who, linked to Liverpool. Yeah, who, has, who played very well. The likes of Chikweze, who is at Villarreal, who are mm -hmm. playing very well. Because it is the start of their careers. They are really young. Can they play to the level of the likes of JJ Okocha? Can they get to that level and someone can say, this is Okocha, this is Onyero, and this kid is good. The way we say, there is a debate now which says between Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi, who is supposed <laughs> to be the GOAT. So that is the big question. Diego Maradona played at his time. He was really good. But Messi has come up. He's really good. So can this crop of players who are playing today get to the level of the players of the past? But I think it's really hard because times have really changed. You know, even um, player selection right now is even influenced with, uh, by so many factors, not even about talent or hard work. So I think even about player selection has really influenced uh, the performance of some teams. And I really doubt if these people can reach... Uh, if these players can reach um, the level of these past players, because even right now, players are not really sticking to that flag. You know, that passion is not there anymore because um, as long as I'm getting money from the club I'm playing for, I don't have any other need because even right now, it's not even about being uh, committed to your to your country. It's about the money you're getting from the football itself. So things have changed i think we can never go back to how it was because things are really changing every now and then and it's going to be hard so it's just that we learned to adapt with this new crop of players we have with, with the time that we are playing in at the moment and we just adapt to it because going back to how it was it will be really difficult. Let's wind up and speak about English Premier League football a little bit. And you support us, Noli supports United. <laughs> you know, both clubs now still living in riches because no silverware, no chances of winning a medal. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's a battle. It's a two horse race yeah. between Liverpool and City as we mm -hmm. speak. As far as English Premier League title chase is concerned, and so is European football. Sebayos. I know mm. he's, 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 he's the talk of the town. Yes. Is he good enough to assist Arsenal yes. get to another level football-wise? Uh, yes, I can really say he's... And he's a loan in, which means in case he impresses <laughs> no, Real Madrid yeah, won't send, true, sell true. him permanently. Uh, no, that is the problem because he's a loan in. I wish we would have that option of making him permanent, but he's a very good player. I saw what he did against uh, Dele Ali. I don't know if you watched that game, um, the London North London derby. So he's a very good player. I hope that he gets a uh, play time so that he can really perform well. So I'm confident about Arsenal um, uh, finishing in top four. I really can't say about winning because right now it, it's tight, especially with Liverpool winning all their games. As in, it's it's tight. Even your former. Uh, your former coach said that it's about um, the top three will be Tottenham, Liverpool and Manchester City. So others will be fighting for number four. So <laughs> Zoro Robert, Daniel James, three goals to his name. He scored uh, more goals than what Alexis Sanchez <laughs> did <laughs> at his time at Old Trafford. Do you think the new kid on the block is something to, to, to look up to at Old Trafford? Yeah, Manchester likes young players, and if a young player is given a chance, he can really perform very well. He started very well, he is playing very well, but he needs that momentum. If 
you are going to score goals all the way to the season. He needs that momentum. And for Man United to perform very well or come back to their glory days that they need to have, they need to have some other players scoring goals. Not, not the way it was that Rashford scores 10, 11 goals is the only one player scoring goals. So you need other players to help in scoring goals. And if Daniel James has come in and is helping in that perspective, then let him be given a chance to impress. It's been the touchline on Y25 for this particular afternoon. Every Saturday, 1 to 3, talking matters, sporting disciplines, both local and beyond. And today, this has been the fan zone where we give a focus on international football. Also, Robert Maebo, co host, and Nyambura Muridi, uh, the guest coming in after a pretty, you know, few months in the cold, but she's back and she looks happy. Don't you? I am. Thanks for watching and let the conversation continue via social media handles. Hashtag touchline Y254. To our super crew did the amazing job. Kudos and thumbs up. Have a fantastic sporting weekend and God bless you.